Welcome to another episode of Purchase to Profits. I'm Seth Ferguson. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss our daily interviews with successful real estate investors. Our guest today has acquired approximately 900 rental properties since 2001, and along with his partner has built several companies in brokerage, management, lending, and construction. Douglas Skipworth joins us today. Douglas, welcome to Purchase to Profits. It's great to have you on the show. Hey, Seth, man, it's great to be here. I appreciate the invite. Yeah, I, I'm really excited to talk to you because uh, you're a guy with some interesting stories. So um, to kick things off, do you want to tell us about your real estate goals right now? Yeah, that's a great question. I've been watching some of uh, your videos and interviews to kind of get a sense of how everybody's got different goals and what real estate is. And you had my buddy Marco uh, Santarelli on yeah. early in your uh, early in the season. and he said it well, which kind of got me thinking, you know, for us and for me specifically, real estate is a means to an end. It is not a goal in itself. And so when we started real estate investing, somebody asked me the other day, they said, Hey, can you, could you, are is your real estate um, allowing you to live passively off of just the income? And I said, Hmm. You know, I hadn't really thought about it that way because that's not my, that wasn't my goal. That's not why I started. I wanted to use real estate as a foundation to build other businesses. And that's, mm -hmm. that's my passion and my partner, Dan, uh, his passion as well. So we were, we started at, with real estate as a foundation. So our real estate goals have always been as uh, something to propel us forward or something to springboard into bigger goals. And so we have specific real estate goals related to our portfolio and some of the things, but then we have more business goals to grow our business, to, you know, make money in our business, to serve our clients well, and then also to continue to expand uh, into different markets. Yeah. So, and I, and I think you make a really good point where real estate is just a means to an end. Like you said, it's just another, it's just another piece in the chain. Um, yeah. And, uh, and, and it, it can just propel you forward into other opportunities. So with your, with your portfolio right now, are you, are you looking to grow it this year or are you just looking to sit tight? Like what, what are your plans for this year? Yeah, great, great question. We are definitely opportunistic buyers. We try to be strategic as well and look for chances to expand the portfolio. We prune the portfolio at times as we find properties that underperform or that didn't live up to the expectation that we thought. Um, occasionally, and you know, we'll talk about this maybe later in the podcast, we, we acquire a property knowing that it's probably not an ideal property and we try to, try to see what we can do. And if we need to kind of uh, cut it loose, we'll, we'll cut it loose. So we've done a lot of that over the past two years of cutting loose properties. We've probably sold 100-ish uh, units, uh, single family duplexes and maybe some triplexes. Mm -hmm. And, but we probably acquired 150, uh, during that time. So, and we got some deals under the, on, in, in the works. Uh, we have not, uh, we closed yesterday on a uh, 15, uh, nice. on our finance package that, uh, we've been working on for several, several, several years. We bought two from this guy. He's about 70 something years old. He's had his portfolio is looking to liquidate. And so, um, we had a great chance to work with him with owner financing hundred percent. Great deal for him. Great deal for us. And so we're, we closed that yesterday. So, um, opportunistic and strategic, if that makes sense. So always looking to grow, always looking to, um, take advantage of the opportunities that, that present themselves. So, yeah. And, and when you first started investing in real estate, um, has your goal changed or did you always say, I want to invest in real estate to allow me to expand into other businesses or, or was it some, something totally different? Yeah, no, it was the fantastic question. So my, I have a business partner. He and I um, met, moved into a neighborhood, started jogging together. I was in residential real estate technology with another business partner. He was buying rental properties on his own. I started buying some rental properties. I had more of a finance and accounting background. He had more of a manufacturing and management background. And we were able to, over time, decide to pool our resources together and buy rental properties. As a foundation, I, I thought that we would end up, um, you know, Lord willing, we would end up buying a business together and using that as a foundation, for example, 
he had a, a manufacturing, he had a W-2 job. I had a business um, with my own W-2 job with a partner. And so we were building this on the side thinking someday we would maybe kind of like that 70 year old man I just mentioned, somebody like that, somebody who was retiring with a small manufacturing facility or a distribution center here in Memphis that we would be able to purchase that from him and Dan would bring his ops experience or operations experience. I would bring my finance accounting experience and we would grow that business. So here we are today, you know, many years later, lots of properties later um, and lots of businesses later. None of that, you know, thankfully is surprising. However, I'm shocked that it happened in real estate. Like I thought we would kind of use real estate and go this way. Instead, we went, got the real estate and it, got us even deeper into helping people manage, helping people buy real estate, helping them take care of their real estate and helping them finance it. And so we've just gotten to be kind of subject matter experts on real estate. And that's where our core capabilities develop. So yes and no, as far as when did we start out with real estate, the foundation and kind of where we got. So yes, Yes, we're surprised with where we are and in, in, in the, found, the business, the foundation it provided, but in the flip side, it's like it did exactly what we wanted it to do. Um, again, thankfully that, that we're able to take advantage of that. So. Yeah. And have you found that having those different businesses within that real estate um, industry has allowed your portfolio to grow better than without it? Has it been helpful? It's been really helpful for us in, in many different ways. Um, some examples being when we were buying, so we, we started as, as a lot of people as W2 kind of investors, kind of investing, not as a hobby. We never did it as a hobby. It was always as a business. So if you read, you know, like uh, Millionaire Real Estate Agent or Millionaire Real Estate Investor um, by Gary Keller and Jay Pepstein, it's like, but, this is a this is a business it's not a hobby so we we always but we had a day job and so as we were doing our day jobs and we were borrowing money from banks and repaying loans when we started our property management company in 2009 our third party property management we were already since 2001 managing for ourselves so when we started third party managing all of a sudden the banks and we'll talk a little bit about this later i think but it was you know, just um, unbelievable timing. You know, we were blessed in the sense of we had a property management company. And so the banks look at us as, as better operators than other W-2 investors because we had the infrastructure to manage properties for ourselves and for other, pro other people and clients. And therefore, and, and what we've talked about is that when the bank started taking back a lot of rental property from investors who were defaulting on loans we had the infrastructure so man we we benefited so much because we had that other business and then since then as we've managed for clients as they want to sell properties we get a first look as do our clients to make us to kind of see if there's a, a trade there before it hits the market and then do an in-house maintenance and in-house construction services financing so we found it in many many ways to be really beneficial for us Another other part I would add for us that's helped is having external clients, as you know, is that accountability that you might be a little bit uh, easier on ourselves than we would as far as systems and processes and people and, and, and doing things. But when you're accountable to clients, it makes you up your game. Um, and so that, that was a real big, uh, it was a portion or a thought process of why we want to take on other businesses to just help ourselves get better. Everybody wins. Yeah. And that, it's really interesting how you said that the lenders actually, you know, gave you a couple steps up because you were in that property management space as well. I, I find that fascinating. Yeah. Oh, oh man, it's been, it's been great. We, we still deal with lots of community banks locally and they continue to bring up last year we had a, a, another foreclosure deal where they brought it to us and just said hey you know we know you guys and you can manage it we've had banker lenders who we lent, borrow from have turned around and come to us and said hey i'd like to buy i'd like to buy some rental property can you help me buy can you help me manage and so we've done done that for them which has been a, again just a really nice kind of win-win for everybody involved and um 
you know, we've, we're just excited about that kind of mutually beneficial relationship of working uh, with lenders. We're constantly, because we have a good relationship with the lenders, we constantly refer our clients to them as, because they're, they're everybody, you know, m almost everybody is looking for some type of financing for their property. So it's a great relationship to have with local lenders um, to provide to our clients by saying, hey, we borrow, we've got these deep relationships, we've worked with these banks for going on 15 plus years. So it, it's a nice introduction, which we love to connect people, you know, connect people with other successful and other exciting, uplifting kind of people. So that's a good, good relationship. Yeah. And, and, you know, your portfolio is growing. You've got all these businesses. How, how do you structure your day? And do you have any routines that you follow that helps keep you focused? Yeah, oh man, that's a, that's a really good yeah. question. Yes. Personally, I'm very, um, in the old day, on a bad day, people say maybe I'm rigid. Um, <laughs> but but uh, on a good day, yes, it's routines. It's organized. It's thoughtful, intentional. So yeah, I've got everything from morning routines. I, I, I'm sure, I, I'm, hopefully somebody on the podcast has mentioned The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. I mean, that's a great book if anybody's looking to really understand routines and set your day right and, and kind of getting on a great trajectory. So I, I practiced a modified version of that and have for many, many, many years. So I loved, I loved when that book came out. Um, and then just, I've got a calendar that I use. Uh, I don't know if you, you, you know, Jesse Itzler, who um, he was a marquee jets or net jets. I think it was marquee jets that sold the net jets, which is a Berkshire Hathaway company. And I saw him on a podcast the other day. He's got a huge calendar that he uses that he carries around. I mean, it's like, it's like massive. One of those desk calendars. I just have a little sheet that I write and kind of keep a day at a time. So um, yes, lots of routines personally to keep me structured and then lots of things like scheduled meetings, um, scheduled events with the family, scheduled events with, you know, my extracurriculars. So yeah, lots of, lots of routine and structure to get everything done. I heard uh, something many years ago called the law of force, the uh, law of force efficiency. And it said, there's never enough time for everything, but there's always enough time for the most important thing. And so if you schedule that most important thing, you, you get that done. If you try and do everything, you can't, can't get it done. So. Yeah. And uh, I, as your business has started to grow, did you ever find yourself overwhelmed at any point? And if so, what changes did you make to kind of rate the ship at that point? Yeah. Good. good uh, yeah, yes. Great questions. Yeah. Um, you, should, you should host a podcast. The, the, over, I wouldn't say overwhelmed because we kind of always felt like we knew what we were signing up for. Have we been busy at times? Have we been stretched in at times, burning the candle at both ends at times? Yes, but as I look back, both my partner and I were like, yeah, we've kind of been doing this since we were 12 years old, you know, in some way or shape, fact, always doing, always going, going, going. So um, we have done things along the way. We're constantly learning, whether it's listening to podcasts like yours, whether it's attending conferences, whether it's doing mastermind groups, whether it's doing one-on-one, -on -one, reading lots of books. So we're constantly absorbing, absorbing, and absorbing lifelong learners because we do kind of, as you, you, you mentioned, like you maybe instead of getting overwhelmed, maybe we kind of hit a ceiling and we got to figure out instead of kind of going this way or going back down, it's like, how can we kind of bust through that ceiling? And so usually the way we've been able to do that is through some type of mentor, whether it's somebody who's been there and done that or a book or a podcast or a, um, some type of mastermind small group um, peer who's been able to kind of talk through the issue with us. And, and then there's just a lot of um, just kind of, you know, roll up the sleeves, sweat equity, just kind of burring through granite kind of like man we are going to get we're going to find a way to kind of get this done so um all of those when we again not been overwhelmed but kind of hit the wall how do you bust bust through that and lots of specifics on those as far as where to get them but, that, but that's what i would say yeah and, and i find it interesting that you mentioned you know those relationships with mentors or you know that was the very first thing you said 
relationships yeah. with other people to help you, you know, bust through that ceiling? Yeah. I mean, I have a partner, Dan, and we've been partners for 12, 10, 12 years and, and you know, Lord willing, always will be. Um, and we love the accountability that brings. We love the encouragement that brings that we, we you know, when he's down, I'm up when I'm up, he's down, he can pull when I can't. And, and he can, Hey, Hey, here's who I met or here's what I read. Here's what I've done. And, and constantly encouraging each other in that and have kind of continued to surround ourselves with people like that. I've been partnered in businesses before with others who weren't as like-minded and didn't have the same vision values that, so when you're able to do that, you know, it's just kind of that one plus one equals three. Yeah. Um, we find that in, in mentors who we click with, connect with, you know, other peers who, who, are doing something similar but different that we can learn from. So yeah, relationships are you know kind of what it's all about. You know, if you if you if you really want to boil life down to to its essence. Yeah. No. I, I, absolutely. And uh, right now you've got about nine hundred. Uh, you've uh, acquired nine hundred properties. Is there is there one that stands out as a keystone deal um, that really moved you forward? Yeah. So we we again we we as as you asked overwhelmed. You know, again, I said hit hit the hit the ceiling. Maybe we've hit the ceiling so many times, so uh, we're always having to we're hitting the ceiling somewhere and having to bust through. So we've had lots of keystone deals as we've kind of come through, but one that was real, you know, kind of foundational for Dan and me was he had a rental portfolio. I had another business and my own smaller rental portfolio, and then we had bought a few properties together. We had. We were mostly buying MLS because um, that was back in, in back in the heyday in the in mid 2000s, and so we said, like, what, "What's a strategy we could try together?" And that was tax sales, and that worked well. And that was a reason why we started kind of coming together. And as we came together, um, we did a few more tax sale deals, to, and, and and that was great. And he, I was still buying for myself. Dan was buying for himself. And then we had a neighbor who was a real estate agent. He was flipping houses for an out of town investor. In the out of town investor, they, they had about 50 properties going in the heyday of 2007, 2008. Um, and, you know, the mortgage pipeline, you know, the, the spigot cut off on mortgages, so they couldn't, they couldn't get these properties sold, mostly owner occupant type properties they were trying to flip. So the realtor came to, to Dan and me and said, Hey, you guys manage for yourself. What about managing these 50 properties for? us and we said man that's you know that that might work you know we, we we it would force us to get better and all these things that we've kind of talked about previously and we managed those properties some of them were offline they were vacant and needed rehab so as we collected the, it, it was the, it was except it was labor day of 2009 when i got my real estate license right at the time i had just been working on it and so we started doing third-party management uh, about 10 years ago for these 50 properties, they sold off some and did something. So it was about 30 properties left and that was a rental portfolio. And we were using the rents collected to, on their behalf to fix uh, the vacant properties. And a bank got involved because they weren't paying their loan. So we ended up kind of switching our services for who we were who we were managing for from the owner to the bank the lender and in the but the but the owner still owned the property long story short we fixed these things up and he the owner and the bank in conjunction um as we as we filled them up as we rented them filled them up got them all fixed up got them occupied then we bought them the bank i can't remember the bank loaned us 80% and then the the owner loaned us the other 20%. So we were no money in. This was something like 20 properties when it was all said and done. And not only did it propel us into a property management business, but it was the first big deal Dan and I did together. And then we went from like three properties together to, oh man, then we got, you know, 25 properties together. Yeah. And, and 
the way that deal played out has just been amazing because the unfortunately the borrower or the owner hit some more cash crisis and so we 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 bought out his 20 percent loan at pennies on the dollar because he was cash hungry i mean he just he was just out of money so we were like maybe we owed him i can't remember two hundred thousand dollars and we we're like hey will you take 20 and he was like yes kind of deal so all of a sudden you know we had a ton of equity in the property um and that bank ended up getting foreclosed on by the fdic and so then it shifted to another bank and got purchased and then that bank had a memphis presence which it because it was out of town before and so then we got a relationship with that bank because of the way it, it all worked so it was a it was a really keystone deal for our property management company for our personal portfolio for learning how to do creative financing with sellers and just, you know kind of buying back and being deal makers um, as far as taking advantage of opportunity so that was a deal for us as i look back that like really really was foundation we're super thankful for the way that worked and had a great time um, doing it and it helped dan and me kind of again kind of build our relationship and solidify kind of our arrangements as we bought a big portfolio together and started a management company together so yeah and, and that's explosive growth from going from three properties to i think you said 25 uh, yeah. so so what had to change with you um to be able to go from that three to 25 because that, that's managing managing changes quite a bit when you scale that much yes it does you're right dan had a pretty sizable portfolio on his own at the time that he was self-managing i'd say 75 properties okay and then you know and then i probably had 10 properties plus we had the three together so we were managing and i was helping doing some work for him and he was helping me with some stuff so you know we're probably managing 100 ish and then adding those was just kind of the next logical step and then you know adding another 100 the next year and then adding another 500 and then adding a thousand so we manage about 2500 houses right now for um probably 750 investors across the world to invest in the greater Memphis area. And so, yes, it, it, like I said, those are those hitting the ceiling moments where you're like, man, how am I gonna, so, you know, maybe your point, how I'm overwhelmed, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna solve this? And so that's when we roll up the sleeve, you know, burn the midnight oil, trying to figure it out, asking questions and trying a lot of, a lot of things, attending conferences, whatever we can to, to serve the clients well, to serve the residents of the house as well, to pay back lenders, you know, it's, Again, it's all about those relationships. So. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Um, so how has getting involved in real estate investing changed your life so far? Oh, man, it has been, you know, it's just been a blessing for me. I mean, partnering with Dan is like, you know, marrying my wife, you know, coming to a relationship with the Lord, marrying my wife, having great parents, you know, partnering with Dan. These are, those are some of the greatest things that I, I, I you know, blessings luck however you want to look at it that is but getting involved in real estate um especially at the time we did i mean like i said we started in 2000 dan started 2001 i started 2002 and that was a pretty heady time things go the internet bubble had burst but but real estate was going and then but we really didn't get cranked cranked up and working together till 2007 and then to hit 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, um, kind of in full stride, that changed our life because we were able to, to build a, a, a business and build several businesses, kind of what, what I'd say build a career and hopefully a legacy for, for future as we want our companies and our personnel and the folks, colleagues and people we work with to just kind of take this thing around with it. Um, all of that changed because of real estate in that timing. So um it is it has been a life changer we've seen it change people's lives dramatically like ours and then just people who are a lot of our clients are are folks who are building for financial freedom trying to create wealth for the future trying to get cash flow now so we we're constantly seeing well uh real estate change people uh, every day so but that's specifically how it's changed us or changed me so i think dan would have pretty pretty similar thoughts but 
Yeah. And, and where do you think uh, you see your business going in the next five years? Man, awesome. So we are we are a what we say is a strategic collection of entrepreneurial minded businesses on a mission to help people succeed. So we want to succeed. We want our colleagues to succeed. We want our clients to succeed. And so we partner with others to develop thriving real estate and real estate related businesses that bring fulfillment to people, benefit to society and glory to God. So that, that's what we're about. And our vision, to, as you ask in that, is to 10x these companies, whether it's a brokerage, whether it's a property management company, maintenance company, you know, a finance company, um, our personal portfolio, a little harder to do that, but we're, we're, we're excited to try. But there are examples of, of companies out there, the bigger ones that are owning 90,000 properties, 100,000 properties. So that we're committed to pouring into our business unit leaders, our colleagues, as they're serving the client so that we can serve more and more customers, clients, residents, borrowers, whatever, um, kind of across. We're in the greater Memphis area, Memphis, Tennessee, and Jackson, Tennessee, which is about 70 miles on the way to Nashville. So we'd like to stay in that West Tennessee, Eastern Arkansas, North Mississippi, so Little Rock to Jackson, Mississippi to, to almost to the Nashville, Tennessee River. So that, that's our next five plus years. Yeah, that'll be exciting. And uh, I'll have to yeah. have you back on <laughs> to, to oh, listen man. to how it's going. Absolutely, yeah. please, please do. I'd love to, love to give an update. As, as we look back, you know, um, that's kind of where we came from of, hey, we started super small, just doing it on the side. And then we added our personal portfolio, then a property management company. Then we started doing some maintenance or brokerage and some maintenance. So yeah, we've got that past now, which has given us a little bit where we com commit Dan Sullivan in strategic coaches is something Dan and I both are really big fans of. And they talk about, you know, committing to something, having the courage to do it, and that builds your capabilities. And then you get the confidence. So as we look back on all of the things that we've done, it kind of gives us the confidence as we look forward to kind of set a goal and then hit the goal and then move the mile marker forward. Um, kind of like the race. Dan and I are our relationship is kind of built on long distance running. We jog every other morning. In fact, we drive, jog five miles this morning at 5.30. So we get up, visit, run, hold each other accountable, rain, shine, sleet or snow. There's always a reason not to go running. Stayed up yeah. too late, got something going on. So all that to say is just setting those goals and milestones and accomplishing those, looking back, celebrating the victories, and then setting the next goal. So, yes. Oh, that, that, that's, a, that's a really good message. And I, I especially liked how you mentioned that, you know, you have to have the courage first and actually yeah. do it. And uh, I think that that's what a lot of people miss. They, and, uh, you know, you just have to, you know, go out and just do it. Yeah, most people think that you have to be confident or have the capability before you start. And that's where that four C's model of, man, make the commitment, make the commitment to do something then get the courage, the, you know, then you'll get the capabilities will build, then you'll have the confidence. <laughs> Dan Sullivan tells a great story about courage where he was in a, 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 a throwing a grenade and how he learned how to do it. And he basically said, his drill sergeant told him, and fear is having wet pants. Courage is doing what you're supposed to do with wet pants. <laughs> so, you know, that's what courage is. You, you, you might be scared, you might be afraid, you might not know how to, but you're gonna do it anyway. You've got the courage to, to try this. So I think that's where a lot of us are. And we don't, we, we've got to, like you said, have that encouraging message because otherwise um, you kind of get a little afraid and scared and, and turn back, but knowing other people feel the exact same way helps. Oh, for, for sure. So that, Douglas, if somebody's looking for some more information about your companies um, or yourself, where can they uh, find you? Yeah, great question. We are crestcore.com, 6amcc.com is coming, which is the, the, the collection of the companies. Um, so check those two out. We're on LinkedIn and other Facebook kind of sites. Crestcorerealty.com is the broker side where they've got a radio show. Me personally, the best three ways are catch me on LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn and bigger pockets. Those are my two kind of social media outlets. And then you can email me at douglas at 6amcc.com. 
That's the digit six amcc.com or, um, you know, link direct message me through one of those other, other ways, man. I would love to, to connect. That's, that's what I enjoy. So. Yeah, that, that's great. Well, Douglas, just want to say thanks so much for uh, taking the time to share your success with us today. Seth, yeah, thanks for having me, man. It was a pleasure. Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. And uh, to you, our viewers, I wish you well in your journey from purchase to profits. See you next time.